Headline news, physical activity reduces many of the risks associated with COVID-19. Over the past couple of years, several risk factors have been well publicized, such as obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, as increasing the severity of COVID, as well as the risk of dying compared to people who are normal weight and do not have these comorbidities. Additionally, older people and frail older people also are at a higher risk of having more severe COVID and death from COVID. What hasn't been well publicized is the dramatic influence that exercise has on our immune system. So stick around as we take a peek into how exercise can help reduce the risk of infection, reduce some of the symptoms from COVID-19, and can even boost the efficacy of vaccines. Hi, I'm Dr. Edmund Kleeman. I'm an orthopedic surgeon in New York. I specialize in sports medicine and arthroscopic surgery. There was a recent study that looked at almost 1.8 million people and what they found was that people who were regularly physically active, meaning doing about 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise a week or 75 minutes of vigorous exercise a week, had reduced many of the risks associated with COVID. For example, an 11% reduced risk of getting COVID, a 35% lower risk of severe disease or being hospitalized, and about a 43% lower risk of dying from COVID all compared to people who were sedentary and not regularly active. There was another study that showed even more dramatic results, and they looked at about 40,000 people to see how active were they before the pandemic. Those people who were not physically active had over a two time greater risk of being hospitalized from COVID and a two and a half time greater risk of dying from COVID compared to people who were regularly active up until that time of the pandemic. In the intro to this video, I discussed that one of the well-publicized risks of dying from COVID is obesity. So one study of 250,000 people looked to see, well, what if obese people exercise, would it make a difference? So what they took was a reference group, people who were normal weight and were very active. And then they compared the obese groups to them. So obese people who were not active had a three times a higher risk of dying from COVID. But what about people who were obese and were highly active? So those people reduced their risk of dying significantly. They were only 1.5 times likely to die. So we went from 3x risk down to 1.5 risk by increasing activity level. Cardiorespiratory fitness is another important factor that can influence risks with COVID. So cardiorespiratory fitness is an objective measure of how well we can get oxygen from the atmosphere into our lungs and then to our muscles. And obviously, again, the lungs and the cardiovascular system are very important. Now, cardiorespiratory fitness is largely determined by our genetics, but how much we exercise also influences and can improve our cardiorespiratory fitness. A study of about 1.5 million young adults and adolescents who were being conscripted into the Swedish military, they looked at their cardiorespiratory fitness. And what they found was those people had high levels of cardiorespiratory fitness, had reduced their risk of being hospitalized from COVID by 25%, and reduced their risk of being uh, admitted to the intensive care unit by 40%, and reduced their risk of dying by 45% compared to people who have low levels of cardiorespiratory fitness. Now, there was another study that looked at adults, and this was about 280,000 adults, and what they found, again, People who had low levels of cardiorespiratory fitness had almost double the risk of severe COVID disease. Now let's talk about exercise and vaccination. So currently one of the most effective means of protecting people, particularly older people from getting COVID is vaccination. So one study looked at this, they looked at the Pfizer vaccine and within 30 minutes of getting that vaccination, patients were placed into an exercise routine. This was an aerobic program on a stationary bike, moderate intensity for 90 minutes. And they consistently found that those people, four weeks later, had elevated antibody response, which is good. Interestingly though, people who only exercised for 45 minutes didn't see that same elevation in antibody response. 
What about exercise and people with acute COVID, meaning that they have tested positive, they currently have COVID, and they're uh, at home in quarantine? So these are mild to moderate cases. These are not severe cases where someone is hospitalized. Several studies, both aerobic exercise and strength exercise, have both been able to show an improvement in COVID symptoms. So there's one study that looked at relatively younger people between the ages of 24 and 45, and they were randomized to a moderate intensity aerobic program three days a week for about 40 minutes each session. And they actually found that patients with COVID, their symptoms reduced and they had taken blood tests and they found that their immune response and the cells from the immune system actually were boosted. So these were benefits that patients who had COVID gained from doing some exercise. Similarly, there was another study that looked at these same types of patients with COVID. And this was exercise that was strength training, not aerobic. And so what was interesting is that these people also did very well they had reduced perceived symptoms of exertion when they were being active and their physical function improved. Things like walking speed and ability to get up from a chair all improved. The last topic I wanna to touch upon is the post-COVID syndrome or some people call it long COVID. And so somewhere between 10 and 20% of people after they have COVID can have persistent symptoms for over 12 weeks. And the most common ones are things like fatigue, shortness of breath, or some sort of cognitive dysfunction. And so the question is, is does exercise have a role in these patients? So there aren't many studies that I could find, so if anybody knows of one, please post it below. However, it's reasonable that exercise can be helpful. There are studies that show that exercise can improve cognitive function. And there are other studies that have shown that exercise can improve feelings of fatigue. However, because some of these patients may be suffering from some sort of depressed lung function or myocarditis, which is inflammation of the heart, any of these patients should certainly check with their physician prior to starting any exercise routine. So let's wrap up this video and go over a few of the key points. Number one, physical activity can reduce many of the risks associated with COVID, including death. Number two, although obesity increases the risk of death from COVID, Performing exercise can actually reduce those risks. Number three, exercise can actually boost the immune response to vaccination. Number four, people who actually have mild to moderate cases of COVID, doing exercise can actually reduce their symptoms and improve their immune response. And number five, for those patients suffering from long COVID, more research is needed. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button and the subscribe button below. Thank you for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you in my next video or in my office.